Hi and welcome everyone to today's presentation of uh, Flexion Mobile. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Knutsson, I'm an equity analyst here at uh, ABG and with me today I have uh, the CFO of uh, Flexion, Niklas uh, Koresar. And uh, without uh, further ado, uh, I leave the word uh, to you, Niklas. Hi there, thanks a lot. Yeah, so if we bring up the presentation. So first of all, I just want to say I'm finally, finally back in the office after a year in lockdown in here in London. It's been it's been quite a tough year to be frank. But it's so nice to be here with you, have your colleagues and a bit of energy around you. Anyway, enough about me. Flex your mobile. If you go to the next slide, please. So Flexion Mobile is the leading distribution platform for the alternative Android market. And that means that we are not building games. We are a service company to the mobile game sector. So we distribute third party games to the market. We're a London based company, 58 staff. We have the biggest portfolio of games and biggest channeling, channel offering on our market. I uh, went to First North about three years ago. Our history is very important in the company. Uh, we're always distribu distributing game, games. Uh, we were world leading on the Nokia Ericsson uh, time back in the days. But that's very important because that means that we already have the relationships and the technology uh, know-how to move into smartphones, which we did in 2014. Uh, we're focusing on mobile. Uh, and within that market, we don't deliver games to apples. We on Android, it's 85% of all devices, that's where the growth is. We don't distribute games into Google Play and not into China, so we focus what we call the alternative market. We've grown revenues a lot uh, over the last years and we're EBITDA neutral at the moment. Next slide, please. So why do we exist? So the game developers uh, write two games files, one for Google, Apple, everyone does the same, three million apps, in each stores, heavily, heavily overcrowded, very hard to be seen, very hard, very costly to be seen for developers in, in, in those stores. Basically, it's, it's very hard for them to grow. At the same time, it's very cumbersome for them to reach out to new channels because the games are basically, each game are basically its own live service at the moment. So some of them try alternative stores, but most of them kind of do it half-hearted and then they're back to the two big ones. So next slide, please. So there is a market problem here that we solved by, by since basically 2014, built, built a service offer where we take care about all steps needed for the distribution. So what we can go and say to a developer, hey guys, you know, you have, uh, you have a file for Android, for Google, send us that file, we convert it, do all the service steps and send you back money. So it's a very, very powerful offering to the market. We're the only entity who, can do, who, can, who has this offer on the market. There is an underlying tech here, which is very important. And that is something basically started on early versions on back, you know, 10 years ago. And that is that we have an automated machine, effectively, repackaging machine. So we can take that file that the game developer sends us and automatically repackages for, for the various stores. And without this one, you can't really scale in our industry. And we are the only people with that technology. And that's, you know, really the underlying driver why we are alone here. Uh, it's a patent. Uh, we have a patent in the US as a patent pending in Europe. Next slide. So effectively, where are we on, on, the, on the market is that, you know, game developers at the moment have two distribution pipes, one to Google and Apple to reach, to come out to the game developer, to the games, uh, gamers. Uh, and what we're saying is add Flex, you know, as a third pipe, and we take care about all remaining distribution here. Uh, so if you look on the uh, next slide, please. So we are then working with the big stores, or the, you know, new stores, alternative stores. And it's, this is massive, massive players. So it's Samsung, one store in Korea, has 30% market share on, on Android. It's Amazon, Huawei, Xiaomi. So these are stores we will work very closely with in partnership uh, with, with these channels. And why, why does the developer uh, need, or why does the world need this alternative distribution? I think that's a very important question. And first of all, from the game developer's point of view, 
they're of course looking for new revenue streams. They need to grow, and it's hard to grow revenues in the existing stores. There is a lot of regulatory pressure on the two existing stores. Uh, they are controlling the market a lot. Uh, and all of us know about Epic versus Apple in the US. You also have, you know, Google have, have big problems in the US on a reg regulatory basis. Europe are fighting both of them. Russia, India, South Korea. So it's a lot of governmental pressure on, on the existing system. Another big factor is that the big developers are, are real takers on the two existing stores. And they want to differentiate. And they can do this in these new stores where they actually, you know, they become a really big customer. So differentiation, increased bargaining power is important. And finally, the two westernized models work very well in, in certain markets. But, you know, in the wider Indian market, Southeast Asia market, it doesn't work at all. So there you need localized stores with localized payment solution, solutions, localized languages, uh, layouts, everything. Uh, so, so we do see a lot of new uh, kind of specialized stores popping up, which increasing the fragmentation on the market. Next slide, please. So why, why is it only us who can do this? And yes, we have technology, know-how, you know, the history. But the important thing here is that it really is a chicken and egg solution. You can't build the technology without games and channels because you don't understand. You don't get enough exposure to be able to solve the problem, technical problem. You can't get the games without the technology and the channels, and you can't build your distribution power without games and technology. So it, 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 it is a classical chicken and egg where you have to spend awful lot of years to slowly, slowly build up your position in the market. So our, our history here is really, really important. And that is why we see you, you have new companies coming and they have distribution or they have some kind of technology, but after two years, they, they're gone. And we see that again and again and again. So what we're doing here is building a lot of uh, very high barriers of entry uh, on our position on the market. Next slide. So effectively we're doing, we're going to this market and build our own ecosystem. We are the first, uh, we have a very scalable model we create the barriers of entry and we start to create network effects, where it's basically that the wheel, economic wheel is start turning by itself. Uh, so we all want to take this market. Next slide, please. Uh, we have a very simple revenue share model. We put out a game in a store, uh, someone pays 100, unit, 100 money, and the store in our stores takes roughly 20%. Uh, so they pay out 80, Google App is about 30, and then we have a soft target of 8 to 20 with the developer. So we would rain, uh, retain 16% as a gross profit in, in the company. Uh, we are at about 11, 12% at the moment, so there is a little bit of growth uh, still on, on the margin, on the existing strategy. We also have a negative working capital model in the company, which means that you know, the more we grow, the, the bigger the cash is. Basically, we take in the cash, hold it, and then pay it out, uh, which is very attractive with me for CFO. Next slide, please. This is the stuff we're most uh, proud of in the company. This has, there's a say in our market, content is king. And, you know, we are either the crown prince or already the king after this short time. So we are working with 19 games, and we talk, we're focusing on the top 800 games in the world. And put that in perspective, I think there is one publisher, game publisher in the whole world who, who control, who publish themselves more than 19 games in the market. Uh, what is even more important is that we say we generate roughly run rate $30 million on these games at the moment. Uh, the universal revenue on these games, what's made, make across all stores is about one and a half billion dollars. So the upside on the existing portfolio is absolutely massive. And why shouldn't we take 10 or 20% of global revenues on these games? So that is five, 10 times uh, what we currently own it, just on the, sim on the existing games. So existing games, very, very important. Next slide, please. We have uh, grown a lot in the company in terms of revenue. Uh, I think we're, aver we're averaging 70% growth quarter on quarter uh, in the company. We released the quarterly numbers here earlier uh, this morning, uh, and 
we released a Q4, which is down 4%. That is something we're very, very proud of because we came into this quarter with three really, really strong quarters. And also the Q3, the December quarter, with all their November and December marketing and promotion events. And we have basically managed to maintain that level through an underlying growth in the company. So we are, it looks really, really good. We also released, because we're in the audit now, so we were quite late with the quarterly reports. We also said that the uh, April numbers are up 14% to the average run rate in, in, in December quarter. So it's continued to grow. And it's, again, it's the existing games that goes. Next slide, please. This is my favorite slide as a CFO. Uh, we have a very linear relationship between growth in revenue and growth, uh, growth in gross margin, and gross profit, uh, at the same time as our cost base is very stable in the company. I don't think you see that many companies who's grown your staff with our growth, has grown your staff by 13 uh, people over two years. Uh, we are adding five to eight people per year uh, in inflection. Inflection, you automate, you don't employ stuff. So basically what happened here is, next slide, is that you, know, you start to see a pretty decent growth on your EBITDA in the company. So from being a kind of control negative growth, we start to be positive. And very, very proud that we, we managed to get a, a positive EBITDA for the, for the full financial year, March to March here. Um, that's good. Also comment on, on Q4. It's slightly down. Uh, it's the last quarter of the year. There's a little bit of audit adjustments, but it's uh, we had some end of year performance payments to staff. And but it's the big driver is FX because both you know dollar versus sterling are playing at Joey at the moment. So we had over 100k in negative FX adjustments, which are kind of for term volatility. Thank you. Next slide. Because we're entering a new financial year, we're given the, uh, some guidance on the next year. We are seeing that on the existing service offer, which is organic, uh, organic growth, uh, growth or traffic in the company, we expect revenues to to grow by somewhere on a forty to sixty percent on an annual basis. So a lot of growth. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Sorry, I just come one thing on the last slide, and that is that is does not include the new initiatives in the company. I want to make that clear. So it's the existing organic traffic, but no new initiatives in the company. Of course, we haven't given a guidance on that. Next slide, please. Thanks. Staff cost very boring. We grow by five to eight people on the existing service offer organic growth. Uh, yeah, we've done it for a couple of years, so. We're going to continue with that. Next slide. I want to comment a bit on, on the growth and the growth drivers in, in the company. And this is very important if you want to follow Flexion. If you look at the KPI section in our quarterly report of, for the last year, you see that the main driver in Flexion was that the top, what we call top tier games, the big games, grows, grew by a about about three times in revenue over a year. Uh, and we also reached now that our top three games all make over $500,000 per month. So that is the key. And the way we, okay, we had a bit of COVID, initial COVID effect, which we don't think are there, but we added a channel, uh, which is Huawei, but we also very closely with all channels because these guys are investing a lot here to, to increase their own distribution power. So what we've done is that when you when you get the right IP, you can continue to work with these stores and also use that almost unlimited upside in, in these games to continue. So distribution of existing games is a key driver for us uh, going forward. At the same time, we can add more titles in the company. Of course, here we're focusing, as we said, is on on high high end games at the moment. You know the top top tier games average about ten times as much as the smaller games for us. So the key is to to add on more quality games and company. It takes a little bit longer to get in, but the driver is is going to be really really strong. Uh, we also add we will add uh, mid sized games also to the company, but they are we see that more to be for strategic reasons for channels or developers or existing developers. So a little bit more selective on that side, but still add 
grow your distribution and grow your uh, number of, of games in the company and you get a very good multiple in total. Next slide. So just to wrap up, a quite narrow existing strategy, you know, add more games, add more channels and get better distribution of existing games. That's what we're doing. Uh, and that gives you a very, very strong growth opportunity. You get a diversified exposure on both game side and distribution side. So you get a more stabilized revenue. I think we start to see that. And you also, what is really the painful thing with a platform is to come up to a level where you reach critical mass. And I think it's fair to say that we start to come up to that one now because you see that the marginal cost in the company start to be, to be quite, lo quite low. And that is, of course, why we start to see movement in the EBITDA in the, in the company. But on top of that, and this is what makes it so <laughs> exciting to work in Flexible, we, we, we come up to this market position, and now we can start looking at, at basically paid traffic. Uh, and that is to expand the existing service offer and take it beyond where we are. And, and that is what we see in the market is a, new, a lot of new initiatives on, on monetize. And you have this within promotion, you have influencer marketing, you have data-driven marketing, uh, you have hybrid distribution outside the classical store, direct consumer distribution, and you have the whole classical UA starting to come into our market. And all of these are things that would fit very well into our service offer, and especially for the bigger games. Uh, so what we're looking at now is that we raised 10 million pounds, 15 million pounds in, in cash in the company, is to look at what are we going to do in-house, what are we doing through partnerships, and what are we doing through M&A activities or acquisitions in the company. Uh, and it's, I'm very pleased to say that we have recruited a senior UA user acquisition manager to lead, to lead those activities in the companies. And we also hired a very experienced uh, M&A corporate development team in the company to look at, at uh, acquisitions in our field. So very, very, very exciting at the moment. Uh, so just to wrap stuff, can I say one more thing here also, that what we're doing on this is we're increasing the service offer and add scalability to, to the you know, existing games. But when we add value, we can also start looking at the margin beyond those 16%, as I spoke about before. So we do see that if we succeed with this, we're both going to have a really, really strong revenue growth, but also look on the margin, uh, margin growth in the company beyond where we are at the moment. So just to wrap things up, next slide. Uh, biggest portfolio games, big in distribution, biggest distribution power, massive, massive opportunity. We're first mover, building barriers of entry. We have a very clear strategy and, and we're growing a lot. So I, we've never been in a better position in Flexion than we are now. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Niklas, for the presentation. Uh, I, will, I will do a short uh, Q&A uh, to follow up. And, and as you mentioned, the, the report that you released this morning concludes a, a really strong year for, for Flexion as a company. Uh, some might think that uh, it is because uh, it has been boosted by COVID uh, effects, but uh, yet you guide for revenue growth of 40 to 60 percent next year. Uh, what will you say be, will be the, the key driver for, for this growth uh, going into the next year? Uh, first of all, this is only the organic traffic. This is not this new opportunity. So we exclude anything from the UA team or the corporate development team in this guidance. So if we get that right, we, we see higher numbers for sure. But it's, uh, it, is, it is the power of, of, of the IP we have, of the games we have. Uh, you know, the upside here is if we get this right, there's unlimited upside in these games. And that is what we see. There's so many different ways we can grow with our you know, corporations with the channels uh, and then, you know, add new channels, add new games. So it's, it's just to continue to grow as is. It's just a, executing on the existing strategy, really. So, so despite that, that uh, you mentioned that the top tier games has gained a lot of uh, revenue per game for, for you, uh, you see potential to increase that uh, further uh, going forward? We are still a couple of percent 
of the total universal revenue. Why shouldn't we be 10-20% uh, of that? You know, <laughs> just need to continue working hard. Perfect. Uh, and another uh, uh, thing that you can do to grow revenue is, of course, to add new games to the portfolio. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about uh, your relationship with the, the customers that you have on board right now. Uh, I mean, they can release new games. Do you, do you think that is the easiest way to, to add the games to your portfolio? Or do you uh, put equal uh, amount of time to pursue also other game developers? So suppose on the existing game, so we, you know, we, we start to come up on numbers on the game. We're making, you know, six million dollars per year, and and they are, you know, we start to, you know, they start to talk about us properly in, in the organizations. And when they when they have new games coming up or other games, you know, ah, look, this guy's actually performing. Should we look at this game and this game? And these are big developers with a lot of games. So yes, definitely more existing. But we also said in, in the report that we have a very small new sales team at the moment, and we want to add more power in that, especially on the localized market. So we, we will invest in more sales to get in, in, more kind of more sophisticated sales also. We just started, <laughs> we're very new, so it's, it's, it's on, on the sales. So it's to increase the sale power to also get in, but focus on quality and not quantity. Okay, perfect. And, and despite the success that, that uh, you are uh, telling us uh, about today, I think you're a bit behind uh, your expectations on, on uh, launching new games uh, uh, to, the, to the portfolio. Uh, can, you, can you just mention briefly what has caused this delay and how you're working to, to fix the issue? Yeah, it's, it's, we are, it's been a bit slow and we're working hard on it. It's been external fact. Externals, it's nothing dramatic, small external factors, internal delays. Uh, we are also some of the games maybe we saw we shouldn't have done, you know, looked at. So we need, to, we, we are looking at how do we improve our, you know, selection of games. We are going to ramp up a bit on, on, on our own delivery cap capabilities, add a little bit more power into that. But it's nothing dramatic, it's just, just to get it moving a bit better. And we are saying, we are starting to release games now. We said that in the quarter report, so two games are coming out very, very quickly. So it's, it's uh, we are getting there. Perfect. And, and based on, on the guidance uh, that you gave this, this morning about the growth and also about uh, the addition of staff, uh, it seems to me that there is a possibility to strengthen uh, Ibita margins going into the next year. I'm just uh, curious to hear your thoughts on that and also on uh, how investors should view the, the long-term gross margin development. Yeah, but it's, it's, we have an existing offer where, as we said, it's the, you know, we can grow the margin on that one a bit. But the big, the big opportunity on the margin play is beyond, you know, to strengthen the service offer and go into paid uh, paid traffic because at the moment all we do is kind of almost free traffic for us what we generate if we can go into that or uh, a paid traffic we increase our service offer and the value of the service or we can then start working much more on the margin play so on the as at, at the current organic it, it very much is a revenue play get the games get the distribution get our position on the market and from then add on services to the company. Beautiful. And, and just if, if we zoom out to, to have the last question here, and if I would summarize as, as an analyst, uh, I would say that uh, 2019 was a year of adding very promising titles to your portfolio. Uh, 2020 was a, was a year of increasing your distribution power with new channels. Uh, I'm just curious, what are you most excited about for, for 2021? It's to add, add top top. Uh, it's to grow the existing games, take them to the to another level, uh, add top quality games to the portfolio, and then what we're looking at is is to increase the service offer. You know, with this M and A activities and U A activities, but we have taken in cash, and we you know we will start to employ deploy that, and that's going to take this to you know completely different level. Uh, and also, all those services are then driving the existing game. So 
important for us to have these games that are receptive for this increased service offer um, in the company. Okay, uh, by that I would like to conclude the presentation. Thank you very much for, uh, for having you, Niklas, here today. Thanks a lot. Thanks for that.